Welcome back to a new exercise. This time we're going to put the trains aside and we're going to look at another kind of exercise that I have seen many times appearing in exams or midterms, but they're not much discussed in practice exercises. So I want to make sure that you have seen this at least once in case you encounter them in your exams. So let's have a look. From the position versus time graphs, describing an object moving along the x-axis shown below, construct the corresponding velocity versus time graphs. To make sure that we are on the same page, in all these graphs we have the time in the horizontal axis and we have the position in the vertical axis. The line there will represent the motion that we're trying to describe. The idea here is just from this plot trying to find out how the corresponding plot for velocity versus time looks like. To start, I'm going to draw here the axis corresponding to my velocity versus time graph. So I have T and I have V. And again, the idea is converting this line to this corresponding line in the V versus T plot. So how do we construct the velocity versus time graph from the position versus time graph? First of all, you need to know that the definition of velocity is the change in position over time. In other words, velocity measures how much the position changes when time changes. In this particular case, we have a completely horizontal line. This means that the position, which is in this vertical axis, is not changing. It's all the time the same. This curve is describing an object that is not moving because it remains in the same position all the time. This is by definition an object at rest. And if the object is not moving, it means that it has no velocity, or to be more precise, that its velocity is zero. So that means that over that period of time, the velocity will be a line, that will be a straight line, completely fixed in V equals zero. So I will draw it just like this. There are two main features that you can look at in the x versus t graph to construct the v versus t graph. First of all, you want to know the value of the velocity. In our case here, it was zero. So how do you look for the value? You need to know that given the definition of velocity, this can be interpreted as the slope of the plot x versus t. Just to remind you, the slope of a line tells you about the inclination of this line. So whether it's going up or it's going down, or if this line is completely horizontal, like in this case. So a horizontal line has a slope equal to zero. Since the velocity is the slope of this line, it will be zero. The value will be zero. The slope tells you the value of the velocity. The other important feature is whether or not that velocity is changing. The velocity could be constant or could be changing, could be going up or down as well. So the question is, how do you find that? The answer is, look for how straight or how curvy this line is. So from the x versus t time, if the line is straight, that would imply that the velocity does not change. In other words, remains the same along the motion. Let's have a look at the next cases, and you're going to see more clearly examples of what I mean. Here a new example. In this case, the x versus t line is not horizontal is going up, is increasing. We say in this case that the slope is positive. Therefore, the velocity will be positive. That means that the velocity will be somewhere here. The next feature is look, look for how straight or how curvy the x versus t line is. In this case, it's a straight line. That means that the velocity will be not only positive, but also constant, so it will not change. A line that doesn't change is a horizontal line, so velocity will look like this. It's positive and it's constant. Here we have another example. In this case, the line is not going up, it's not horizontal, but it's actually going down. That means the slope is negative. The inclination of this line is negative because it's going down. If the slope is negative, it means that the velocity will be negative. So we know that the line that I have to draw here will not be here. It's going to be somewhere down here. In fact, I will have to extend my axis a little bit down because it's going to be a negative velocity. So again, it's negative because the slope of the x versus t plot is negative. 
because it's, the line is going down. The second question is, is this line straight or curvy? The answer is it's straight. If the line x versus t is a straight, that means that the velocity is constant. In other words, it will be a completely horizontal line. That means that our graph v versus t is going to be something like this. So it's a negative value, it's below the axis, so it's below this point, which is v equals zero, and it's constant because it doesn't change with time. We have here another example. In this case, the line is not a straight, it's a curvy line. So that is already an important piece of information. So the first question is, is this line going up or going down? It's going up. Line going up, x versus t line going up, means positive slope. That means that the line that I have to draw in the v versus t graph will be somewhere here, not here. It's not negative, it's positive. The second question is, is this line straight or curvy? Well, we already answered that, it's a curvy line. That means that the velocity is not constant. We have a line that is going up. But not only that, it's going up faster and faster. In other words, the slope of this is increasing. So if you could measure the inclination of this line, it's actually starting from zero and it's increasing. Since the slope of the curve x versus t corresponds by definition to the velocity, this means that the velocity starts from zero and then increases with time. In other words, the line will be something like this. These two plots are equivalent and they describe an object that not only is moving, but is moving faster and faster as the time goes by. This is, in fact, what represents an object with constant acceleration. Let's look at two more examples for which I need some extra room here. Here we have another example which combines some of the ideas already discussed. This graph involves three different sections that I would like to distinguish carefully to indicate the time when this happens. We have two and there is the third. All right, so let's build the velocity versus time graph. We're going to go section by section. So on the first section, we have an object that is moving, starting from zero, and it's moving along the x-axis at a completely constant speed. We know that because the line is a straight. It's not a curvy line. Straight line means constant velocity. The fact that the line is going up implies that the slope is positive, therefore the velocity is positive. So we can draw our velocity something like this. It's constant in all this region and it's positive. And that's it. We can now move to the next section. Here, the slope is negative. The line is going down as time goes up. That means that the slope is negative, therefore the velocity is negative. So we know that the velocity in this section will not be here, it will be somewhere here. The next question is, is this velocity constant or not? The fact that this line is straight and not curvy means that the velocity is constant. In other words, the velocity will look like this. Negative, but completely horizontal line, representing a velocity that does not change. Constant velocity. On the third part, again, we have a positive slope. The line is going up again. And also that the line is straight. That means that the velocity is constant one more time. So I can draw the velocity in this form. And this is the velocity versus time graph. It doesn't look very pretty or maybe even intuitive, but this is exactly how it looks like. This kind of combined motion we, we can find in many exercises. In fact, this corresponds to exercise number two, where we had an object that was moving first to the right and then to the left and then back to the right again. Here, the right represented the positive direction of x, so it's increasing in x, then it decreases in x, goes all the way to the negative side of x, which means the other side of the origin of the coordinates, and then coming back. And this ended up in position minus two meters. So this graph describes precisely that particular motion. One last case in which we combine several types of motion. Once again, we can distinguish several sections, which I would like to distinguish properly using these dashed lines, just like that. Okay, so let's now build the v versus t graph from the x versus t graph. So we're going to go one by one on these five different sections of the motion. First part, we have the object that is completely static 
as time goes by, the object is not moving and is sitting at x equals zero. It's an object at rest, it's not moving. Or going to the two questions that we use in the all the previous cases, we have horizontal line. No slope means no velocity, so zero velocity. That means v will look like this in the first part. Great, let's look at the second part. In the second part, the position is start increasing with time and increases in the positive direction. We call this a positive slope, therefore positive velocity. Velocity will be then somewhere here and not here. Second question, is the line straight or curvy? Well, the line is obviously straight. That means that the velocity is constant. That means we can draw our velocity like this. Just a completely horizontal line representing a positive and constant velocity. Next, again we have a horizontal line. That means the object moved to that coordinate, some position end of x, and remained there for some time, so it was not moving. So again the velocity there will be zero. Exactly like this. In the next part, we have again positive slope, the line is going up again, but notice a difference between this line and the previous line in which we had positive slope. The slope is larger here, the magnitude of the slope. In other words, this line is going up a little bit faster than this. We can also say that the inclination of this line is positive just like this, but the inclination of this is larger than the inclination of that one, of the previous one. That means that in that segment, the object was moving with positive velocity, but it was moving faster than before. The fact that it's also a straight line means that the velocity is constant. This can be drawn just like this. So once again, constant velocity because the line is straight. Positive because the line is going up, so it's, it's increasing in the position, but a little bit higher than the previous one because the inclination is higher. So the inclination of the, of the line tells you the slope, and the slope is by definition the velocity. The same applies in the last part. The line is going down, so this velocity will be negative, but it's going down with the same inclination as in the previous part. So the magnitude of this inclination is the same as that. That means that our negative velocity will be down here, approximately at the same distance from the axis as the previous part. So to summarize the important things or the important steps to build the velocity versus time graph from the position versus time graph, are first of all the slope of the line, which tells you the magnitude of the velocity. It also tells you whether it's positive or negative. And second, how straight that line is. If the x versus t line is straight, that means that the velocity is constant, that velocity does not change with time. In the next exercise, we're going to continue on something very, very similar, but instead of position versus time to velocity versus time, we're going to go from velocity versus time to acceleration versus time. So make sure that you don't miss that.